Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Hannah Deppin, and on behalf of the team at Old Ways, I'm happy to welcome you all here today. Old Ways is a food and nutrition nonprofit helping people live healthier, happier lives. It is an honor for us to collaborate with Age Friendly Boston and Armenian Heritage Park on the Greenway for this series. With each cooking demonstration, we learn about a cultural tradition and how to prepare a traditional recipe. And today we're extremely grateful to be joined by Sanctuary Kitchen and Chef Sharifa Zareen, who will show us how to prepare an Afghan recipe. Before we get started today, I'm gonna to remind you that if you'd like to watch this again or share it, a recording will be available on oldwayspt.org and by searching Old Ways on YouTube. And finally, to make today's recipe, you'll receive it in your email shortly after the webinar. We're gonna play a pre-recorded demo that Sharifa recorded at Sanctuary Kitchen. So as you're watching today, please type your questions in the chat and Q&A, and we'll get to as many of them as we can. And now I'm happy to introduce Andrea Burns from Age Friendly Boston. all of you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Andrea Burns and I'm the director of Age Friendly Boston, which is an initiative within the city of Boston's Age Strong Commission. I wanted to let everyone know that this program is re-aired on Boston City TV from Monday through Friday um, from nine to 10 and on Boston Neighborhood Network throughout the week. And um, it can be found on Comcast 23, RCN 83, and Verizon 1960. So if anyone missed it today, not only will you get a recording, but for anyone who doesn't have a computer, um, it can be found on those two networks and channels. Uh, undoubtedly, this is a very hard time. We all know that. Uh, I just want to uh, extend my thanks and express my feelings of gratitude for my partners, for the partners, Old Ways and Armenian Heritage Park on the Greenway, just the, the exceptional work that you do to bring this series to fruition every few weeks or so. It's been a real joy and a bright spot in this, uh, this tough time. Um, I wanna thank Catherine Katz who introduced us to the idea of Sanctuary Kitchen and to Samaya Khan and um, really encouraged us to get in touch with her. So we're so grateful that Catherine made this connection. And last but not least, I'm so grateful to all of you for being with us today, for continuing on so many of you coming every single time. And so it's just great. You're making the series um, viable. And so we're so glad that you, that you continue to join us. Uh, now I'd like to introduce, um, well, we're Samaya Khan, who is one of the organizers of Sanctuary Kitchen, and then the chef as well, who is Sharifa Zareen, originally from Afghanistan, and just wanted to let everyone know that this is the first time we have featured the cuisine of Afghanistan in our series, so we're so very pleased to have Sharifa with us today. Enjoy the class, everyone. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sumaya. I'm from Sanctuary Kitchen at City Seed here in New Haven. Um, we're really excited to participate today. Um, and I just second um, the sentiments that were expressed. Um, we're grateful for all the partnerships here um, this morning. And um, we are excited to share about Sanctuary Kitchen and uh, Sharifa's amazing food with you. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much. Now we're going to play our pre-recorded demo. Um, please type your questions as you watch and uh, we'll have a Q&A afterwards. Hello, my name is Samaya and I'm the Kitchen Program Manager at City C. We run a program called Sanctuary Kitchen that partners with refugee and immigrant chefs to build economic opportunity and authentic connections through food. We do this through refugee and immigrant-led culinary events like cooking classes such as these, um, as well as a catering social enterprise that provides employment and professional training for the chefs who participate. Because of COVID, everything has moved virtual, so we're doing virtual events like this, um, as well as a weekly menu where customers can pick up Sanctuary Kitchen products um, from our kitchen twice a week. Today we have Chef Sharifa from Afghanistan who's going to uh, share her famous recipe, Banjan Gurani. Sharifa? 
Hi, my name is Sherita. I'm from Afghanistan. Um, I have uh, four children. Uh, today is a weekend of Banjan Burani. I'm going to introduce uh, Frey Doon, who is Sharifa's husband, and who's going to facilitate with uh, Farsi interpretation. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Frey Doon Zareen, and I will be the interpreter for the uh, cooking or banjan uh, brani, and we will start what we need to have our cook the yeah, banjan brani. Um, uh, we cooking today the eggplants, which is the three piece of the eggplants, uh, the, the large pieces, and. Uh, and uh, we have uh, five tomatoes, uh, like normal tomatoes. In the eggplant, we didn't want like a, we didn't peel it because we're gonna show you guys how to peel it. Yeah, and we have a uh, two cups of co uh, vegetable cooking oil, uh, and a, a tomato paste, which is two teaspoon, tablespoon. Buga. Um, the, the 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 garlic, as in like a three of these. Malga. Uh, the, the salt, uh, 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 as a tested, like for the tested. And uh, the the dry mint. Mm -hmm. One one like chili, the, the pepper. Amaste. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it, almost two cups of the yogurt, the the dried yogurt. Whole milk yogurt. Whole milk yogurt. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, first we're gonna do I uh, put the oil on a on a, uh, the, on, a on a pot and and make it like a um, put the fire on it, put him on the fire to, to become hot. Okay. Uh, uh, she's going to leave the uh, uh, oil to, be, uh, to become hot on a medium high and, and then she's going to start the peeling of the eggplant. Um, so we, we also give them the oil some time to, to become hot and by that time we're gonna uh, peel the eggplant. And does it matter what kind of eggplant that you use? Is it these big ones the best kind or the small ones? Any kind of eggplant works. I like it. Okay, any kind of eggplant uh, is fine as, as soon as you cook it well, and the eggplant is going to be not like a uh, old and it should be fresh. Okay. As soon we are, we are finished with this, uh, she's going to put it in a fryer uh, on oil. So the oil is pretty hot. Uh, no. No? Not ready yet? No. Okay. Not, not really yet. Yeah. I'm gonna give him some yeah. uh, uh, about four or five minutes more. Okay. Oh. Now, first of all, it's gonna like suck. You can see this uh, like a sponge. It's gonna suck the oil, and then no. it's gonna smell like an oily smell. The the eggplant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which is we're gonna avoid that. Okay. By cooking. Yeah, we just give them another maybe three minutes. Okay. And then we're gonna put the uh, eggplant on an oil. 
Uh, well, as soon as we see the oil is like a very hot, like you guys see it, it's hot. Then we put in like a one one piece on an empty spot. Um, Yeah. Uh, we're gonna give them about uh, five minutes uh, on oil. Uh, when when the eggplant change the color, uh, like become a little bit brown, and then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna put another same amount of the eggplant to the fryer. Okay. So. This dish, Banjan Barani, is it considered a main dish or a side dish, appetizer? Yeah. It's a, it's a most of the time uh, like a, in our country using like a side dish um, and it's not like a main dish. So um, people um, use this for the chicken and other kind of meat, to every kind of meat. Yeah. And also in the meantime, we have to watch to flip it. Um, to not like a cook well on one side and the other side going to be not cooked well. So we're going to keep watching on it and, and pay attention to to both sides um, get cooked uh, on the same. And how did you learn how to make this dish? Oh, sorry, I didn't say oh. Who taught you how to make banjan barani? My mom. Your mom? Her mom. Is it something that you make often? Oh. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So is it a everyday food or a special occasion food? No. What you have the is hot water. What you have is hot water. Ah, now the Dutch manga, the Dutch manga, the Dutch manga, the Dutch the the our our party or at the on the weekends when especially we use it with the um, um, mantu and rice mm -hmm. when uh, uh, and, and it, it, it. Yeah. also we we uh, we cook this on also on the side as a as a side dish. Mm -hmm. So is it almost ready? Oh yeah, yeah. I can see that it's getting golden. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to give him uh, probably another minute, one minute, um, to become like a full golden or, or dark um, brown, and then we're going to kick it out from the oil. Okay. And then uh, she's gonna add uh, salt on it. And then we're gonna use another uh, a pot to to put that eggplant on our until it, it's finished or, or it's lasting. So while uh, the eggplant is cooking, 
Um, tell us about other uh, Afghan food that you like to make. Uh, she said that uh, I like to, there's a lot of foods, but especially what I like is it's uh, uh, we call Uzbeki um, Palau, which is rice, um, like a special rice with um, um, raisins and carrots and uh, meat. And also the mantu, which is probably you guys uh, um, already ate it or maybe familiar with. That's Afghan uh, food also. Those but are the dumplings, yes? Dumplings. Yeah. yeah. And what do you put inside those? Which is the mantu mantu for mine skin, cook chop, cook chop, cook chop, cook um, uh, we put the uh, eggs inside the dumplings, the uh, uh, grounded uh, meat with um, uh, garlic, um, um, onion, uh, salt, uh, black pepper uh, that, that comes inside the uh, mantu. And then you make oshak, which is also a type of dumpling, yes? Yeah. And what do you put in the oshak? Uh, we just uh, use the, the leek. Leeks. Leeks, yeah. Yeah, leeks. And, and sometimes the onion also, like a, a little bit of onion. Uh, mm -hmm. on, a, on a, like in the whole, uh, maybe 20 person, which is makes the taste better. And it's the same thing, uh, like a manfu. So at Sanctuary Kitchen, the mantu, the aushak, this banjan barani is some of the most popular dishes. Um, at the dinners that you've cooked at, there's always, it's always finished <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Uh, we call the eye khanam, which is also like a dumpling, like a mantu. It's kind of bigger and it has a, a lot of things inside. It, it's also no. the test. And it, it's, we mix like a flour, like a rose flour. And, and test also same thing like a mantu. Um, and people like that. And, and also in a, in a, if, if you cook it well, it's, it's most uh, delicious or, or tasty than, than mantu. Mm -hmm. So the second batch is coming out. Okay. And for the sake of time, after this step, we'll go on to the next one. We can do those later. Yeah. And then we'll be going to start cutting the tomatoes. The next step is uh, we're going to start the cutting uh, slicing the, the tomato, uh, which is the, the normal like a slice, and also like a cube. You know, and uh, uh, I'll show you the, the size, uh, which is in, in, yeah, in, okay. in, it's in this size. Uh, the four piece that we are chopping or, or cut and slicing, and, and in the last one, like in the fifth one, we leaving um, for the for the last. Um, time to, we're gonna put that one raw, like a cut in the slices, not slice like this. It's gonna be like a circle slice, and we're gonna put it on our top of the banjan burani. Okay, now uh, we're gonna remove some oil uh, from the pot. It's very hot. Good. 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 Okay, so you're only putting leaving a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna leave it a little bit for the tomatoes. Okay. 
And now we're going to add in the tomatoes on a on a on. a teaspoon, a quarter to half a teaspoon to taste. Okay. And sauteing that. Mm -hmm. So now it's been cooking for five minutes or so. And it's gotten pretty soft. And saucy. Like um, chop it a little bit more by the uh, the, the spoon. Mash right. it. Okay. Yeah. And as soon as we see the, the, the oil on the, on it, like right now, it's a little bit water also. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna like uh, take it out or remove it from the from the oil pan. Okay, so you're going to let the water evaporate? Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we going to do in the same time just um, like a, the, the, the garlic, the okay. pressure? Yeah. So you're adding how one, much? One. 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 Only one? Yeah, yeah. Only one. One clove. Okay. Yeah. So how long should this cook? Uh, two minutes, three minutes. Two or three minutes, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So you're going to add the eggplant back in. So for those of you who are watching, if you cook all your eggplant, you're going to have a lot more than we do here. Uh, we've only cooked half the eggplant. Um, and this bonjon and bizan, the tomato. Okay, so you're adding the, the fresh sliced tomatoes on top. And then we're going to add the hot pepper. Yeah, you can say... Make it lower? Lower. No. Okay. So after you put in the tomatoes um, and the peppers, you're going to cover it and then lower it to uh, put the temperature to low. You're taking the other clove of garlic. Yes. And, and adding it to the yogurt. Mm -hmm. Two garlic. Two garlic cloves. One in this spoon. So you're putting one uh, one eighth of a teaspoon yeah. of salt. One and a half. Okay. So basically a little less than a quarter teaspoon of salt. Yeah. Uh, this one mix. And then mix it up. So you said you use, at home you use yogurt, but you also use dried yogurt? Yeah. What is that called? In Farsi? Uh, chaka. Chaka. Yeah. And do you, you make that yourself? Yes? Or you make it at home or yes. you buy it? I make it. You I make it? it? Yes. Finished. That's finished? Yes. So what are we doing? You're going to spread some yogurt that you made with the garlic and salt. Four spoons. Four spoons. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so you're laying the eggplant and tomato mixture on top of the yogurt. Okay, so you put half of it, yeah? Okay. Yoga. So you're going to add some more of the yogurt. Okay. Uh, so this is dried mint. Dry mint. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna sprinkle that on. So now you're just uh, decorating. <laughs> yeah. So you're drizzling the oil from the, the dish. Okay. Because that has a lot of the flavor, yes? Beautiful. So Sharifa also made fresh naan, Afghan naan, to eat with the banjan barani. So this is... Is this how you normally eat it? You eat it together? Yes. The naan and so... You eat it together, okay. Or you can, can you eat it with rice? This one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes. With rice, okay. But uh, it looks like this would be the traditional way to eat it. Thank you, Sharifa. You're welcome. Samaya and Sharifa, thank you so much for that demonstration um, and teaching us how to make this dish. It looks beautiful. Um, and now I invite you to turn your cameras on. Uh, we received quite a few questions as we were watching the video, so we can start answering the questions from the viewers. I think you have to enable the video. I just asked you to start your video. And Sharifa is not on. <laughs> we will try to get uh, Sharifa back onto the webinar. Um, in the meantime, we will go through some of the questions. Yes, uh, thank you everybody for joining. Um, I hope you were able to follow along. Um, it is a, a, a pretty simple recipe um, and it's a very popular dish here uh, at Sanctuary Kitchen whenever we have it at our events. Um, this is the first time actually teaching it. Um, so you are getting a little inside uh, um, uh, privilege here because we don't usually teach this recipe. But um, so I'm happy to try to um, answer some of the questions until Sharifa is able to join. Um, so let's just go through here. Um, and, uh, we apologize for the background noise uh, because of COVID, um, you know, getting interpretation and um, childcare in person has been a challenge uh, for the chefs that we work with. And um, so we had to kind of make do what, uh, with what was available. So um, the lovely noises that you heard in the background were uh, Sharifa's four children um, who were joined, <laughs> joining us that, that evening. Um, so the first question is, um, can you use another vegetable besides eggplant? 
Um, so this dish is called banjan barani. Banjan in uh, Dari and Farsi actually means eggplant. Um, so it is the main, um, one of the main elements of this. So there is another version called kadu barani, which is made with um, pumpkin or squash, like any winter squash, like butternut squash, um, that you could substitute. The recipe preparation is a little different. Um, I know, I think Sharifa can maybe explain. Um, uh, Marguerite, can you um, ask the question to Sharifa in Farsi? Sure. شریف خانم میگن به جز بادمجون این غذا رو با چی دیگه میشه درست کرد میتونین توضیح بدین بله بانجان رو با چی دیگه درست کنیم بادمجون میبخشین سوال شما رو من نفهمیدم به جای بادمجون یعنی اگه بادمجون نتونن استفاده بکنن به جاش میشه مثلا کدو بذارن چی یه چیز دیگه دارن که بتونن استفاده کنن بله ها چرونه کدو میتونه کدوی سبز هم میتونه کدوی صدای من میشنوی؟ بله بله, بله, بله. میتونن کدوی پم، پمکین میگن بله بله um, so yes she is saying you can use pumpkin or squash instead ولی میتونیم توضیح بدین که چجوری باید استفاده کنن We'll come back <laughs> to that maybe. Um, it is a it is a, a little different recipe. I, I think it doesn't use uh, fresh tomatoes. It only uses tomato paste, and and then the cooking is a little bit different. Um, um, some people were intrigued by the naan. Um, there is we are, we don't have the recipe for the naan to share. Um, it's a little bit more of an uh, elaborate process because it involves uh, making the dough, letting it rise, and so forth. So. Um, maybe sometime when we have more, more than an hour, uh, we can, we can try that. Um, it's, it's really delicious. Um, and each, uh, Afghan chef makes it a special way. Um, so it's, it's definitely something you want to try. Um, a lot of the other comments and questions, I'm just going to scroll back and try to see what I can answer until Sharifa is able to come on. Um, somebody who said, if, can you make it without tomato um, because of allergies? Um, as you can see, the tomato was kind of the base of the sauce. Um, so if you use something else like red pepper, it, it would dramatically change um, the recipe and the, and the flavor. Um, so maybe um, this might not be the best dish for you, unfortunately. Um, Let's see, uh, there were some questions about the oil and how hot to get it. Um, you wanna use a, an, a vegetable oil that can stand high heat. Um, so something like a high oleic safflower oil would work because you wanna get it to about 375 degrees so that um, when you put uh, the vegetables in, and in this case, the eggplant, it cooks quick um, without absorbing um, all all like excess oil. Um, eggplant can act as a sponge if the oil is not hot enough and, and absorb it all. So it's really important um, that um, when you deep fry anything, which is usually not recommended, but if it's done right um, with the right temperature and the right oil, um, it can actually not be a, an oily food. Um, there was somebody asked about using um, an oven. Um, when we prepare this dish in uh, Sanctuary Kitchen for our catering, we do just lightly brush it with oil and, and put it in the oven uh, to roast, um, sliced. Um, you can put it under the broil or just bake it for um, until it's cooked through. So that is an option um, to try. Um, sometimes um, the, it, the way that Sharifa prepared it, the eggplant gets really soft. Um, and it kind of like melts in your mouth. Um, so the effect might be slightly different, but it's certainly um, possible. 
Um, Sharif, are you back? Okay. Oh, yeah, good. You are back. I didn't see your like screen. Them. Sorry, I didn't mean to take over. Um, and also just uh, for all of you watching, uh, Marguerite um, is uh, a member of the Sanctuary Kitchen volunteer team, and um, she's interpreting for Sharifa today. Um, so thank you. Um, Sharifa, I, somebody asked about um, uh, if you could, do you ever cook the eggplant in the oven instead of frying it? میگه که میتونی توی اجاق گاز یعنی به جای اینکه روی اجاق گاز بذاری توی اجاق گاز بذاری مثل اینکه مثلا کیک میپزی اونجوری هم میشه بله بله میشه اونجوری هم میشه روی چند درجه yes it can be done like that روی چند درجه 350 uh, 150 degrees centigrade, uh, which uh, translates, I think, into uh, um, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. But چند دقیقه؟ ده دقیقه باز ده دقیقه For ten minutes, ten whole minutes. Okay, great. Um, there's a question. Um, are there any ingredients you cannot find in New Haven? What similar foods do you use instead or how do you change the meals as a result? اگر که این همین مواد رو نتونی پیدا بکنی میتونی یه تغییری توش ایجاد بکنی یه چیزای دیگه بخری به جای مثلا چه میدونم گوجه فرنگی اینا و چجوری تغییر میکنه قضاتون چجوری تغییر میکنه اگر امه چی در نیافتیم بانجان بانجان سیار ما میگم نه میتونیم از کدو استفاده کنیم اگر بانجان رو میدن نیافتیم میتونیم از رب استفاده کنیم so if uh, you don't find um, eggplants you can use squash instead uh, the green ones or the yellow ones also. And uh, instead of tomatoes, you can use tomato paste only. Um, there's also, um, Sharifa, in, in terms of other dishes um, that you make, um, are you able to make almost everything that you're familiar with in Afghan cuisine or um, do you have difficulty because you can't find ingredients? میگه که اگر که این لوازم رو پیدا یعنی میگه که به طور کلی برای غذاهایی که شما دارین از افغانستان همه چیزا رو اینجا میتونیم پیدا کنین بله ها اما چیزش است مگر یک گندنه افغانستانی جا نیست دیگه همه چیز است چی چی افغانستان اینجا نیست گندنه لیک لیک Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, uh, they can find everything here. Just they cannot find the Afghan leek here, which they use so much. Yeah, uh, the leeks, uh, the gandana is a type of leek um, that goes into their uh, leek dumplings. And um, the best thing that we were able to find that's similar is um, a Chinese leek. Um, from the Asian markets here. Um, and then uh, we've also experimented with regular leeks and spinach. Um, so that ends up being uh, working out well. Um, somebody asked about the restaurant um, <laughs> that we are, uh, which we are not a restaurant, um, although uh, Sharifa and her husband um, have a long-term goal to open up a restaurant here in New Haven and Sanctuary Kitchen is trying to support them in that process. Um, Sanctuary Kitchen is a nonprofit here in New Haven and we um, do culinary events like this as well as uh, we have a catering social enterprise um, which now because of COVID we you know we are pivoting um, to kind of take out options uh, twice a week that people can order um, so it's, uh, if you're ever in the New Haven area, which I, some of you are who joined in, um, check us out at sanctuarykitchen.org. We post our menus every Saturday um, and we have some Thanksgiving specials coming up as well. 
Um, the recipe will be sent out after the class, um, as well as the recording, I believe. Um, a lot of people are saying, thank you, Sharifa. It looks beautiful, uh, looks tasty. Um, lots of uh, praise and thanks to you. خیلی ها دارن تشکر میکنن میگن خیلی خوشمزه است مرسی که با ما اینو به اشتراک گذاشتی بگو خواهیش میکنم از شما هم تشکر که دیدن سایلش میکنین تشکر از شما هم چنا It's a privilege to share um, what I know with all of you There's a question about the mint that you used um, They're asking does it matter if it's peppermint or spearmint Or does it matter? Are you familiar with the fact that in mint that you use, the flavors 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 that you use, Uh, you can use any kind of mint. It has a beautiful smell and it gives a good smell to the whole dish. So you can use any kind. And we used uh, dried mint in this recipe. Um, one question. I noticed that the tomato paste was not used. Did I miss that step or was it in another recipe? So we had a little bit of a mishap um, in the kitchen. Um, The tomato paste gets added um, to the uh, cooked tomatoes um, in the pan um, before you add the eggplant um, in, in kind of the nervousness of, of recording this demo, we, it, it got forgotten. Um, so technically, I guess you could skip it, but um, it really adds to the texture of your sauce um, and the flavor. So um, you would add the tomato paste after the tomatoes are cooked um, and before you put the eggplant um, in it, okay? Um, let's see, question uh, or comment question here. Uh, looks delicious. Are there regional differences in Afghan cuisine? Um, I didn't understand the question. I, I cannot see it here. Would you please explain? It's, the question is, um, are there um, differences in cuisine depending on what part of Afghanistan you are, are from? Okay. شایف خانم میگه که توی قسمت های مختلف افغانستان آشپزی های مختلف هست، قضاهای مختلف میپزن؟ بله ها. هر بخش افغانستان غذاهای مختلف می پزن اما باز ما خودم امرای هر بخش آشپزی کرده ایم اما هر بخش شلایده آشپزی داره خودم مادرم یک آشپز لایق بود اما یاد دارم اما چیز افغانستان که پخته می کنه یاد دارم اما ایجا ات وقت نامده که ما نشان بدم فقط هم سه چیز است که ما نشان میدیم اما افغانستان بسیار غذاهای مشهور دیفرنت داره yeah there are so many different dishes in every part of afghanistan my mom was a very good chef and she taught me so many of them uh, the deliciousness and um, yeah i i try to make them for my family and uh, I enjoy them so much, yeah. And um, here at Sanctuary Kitchen, we have chefs from um, 11 different countries and um, we have a few chefs from Afghanistan, but they're from different cities. Um, and each one will make, um, you know, different dishes um, or even something like banjan birani, um, even though they all might make it, they will, make it differently and it will taste different. Um, some of them add peppers, um, some of them add onions. Um, so depending on what um, area they're from, they will have their regional uh, uh, characteristics um, as well as personal taste. Um, have you seen an increase in, increase in people going to Sanctuary Kitchen because of COVID? Um, so uh, we've had to completely shift. I mean, our, the premise of our our work is people gathering together over food. 
Um, we you know we did in-person cooking classes, we had suppers um, and other events uh, featuring the chefs and, the, and their food um, in person. So, um, and, and catering obviously, uh, you know, parties, meetings, uh, dinners. So now uh, all of that's not happening. Uh, we're trying to do more of these virtual events. Um, so uh, we've had a few virtual classes like this. This is the first time where it was pre-recorded. We usually just do them live. So, um, you know, we're, we'll start, we're still figuring out that piece, um, but we do post um, all our upcoming events on our social media, as well as on our website, sanctuarykitchen.org. So you're welcome to join. The exciting thing about COVID is that we've been able to uh, reach a larger audience outside of New Haven and outside of Connecticut, um, because since things are virtual, people can join in from anywhere. Um, we've had people join in from Vancouver and from Turkey and, and Europe. So it's been really exciting to really branch out and share our work and um, highlight the chefs that we work with. Um, let's see, great class, thank you. I like the happy sounds of children, um, stay safe. Um, we did have, somebody said um, that we've had, there's a, some attendees who've attended classes from Sanctuary Kitchen in the past and um, they have enjoyed it or have ordered food from us. Uh, thank you for doing that. We really appreciate the support. Um, See. Question from someone who's wondering, are there any um, typically American vegetables or ingredients um, that you've incorporated into your cooking now? Uh, would you please give an example so I can translate it? Sure. Uh, I don't know if Josie, who asked the question, is still on and would give an example, um, but Josie asked, are there any particularly American vegetables? Um, میگه که آیا هیچ کدوم از این سبزیجات آمریکایی هست که شما توی غذاهاتون استفاده کرده باشین؟ سبزیجات آمریکایی؟ ها. بله آه اون از سبزیجات آمریکایی هم پخته کرده این. مثل مثلا چی؟ بروکلی. توی قضاهای افغانی استفاده کردیم؟ بله ها استفاده میکنیم Yes, uh, we have used broccoli in our Afghan dishes and it tastes so good That's great um, Somebody asked how is the Afghan leek, uh, Gandana, how is it different from ours? فرق گاندانه میگه با لیک مثلا معمولی که اینجا هست چیه؟ او گاندانه افغانستان بسیار خوشمزه است، نرم است، ذائقه خاص داره. اینجا اگه تو جای برمیاب شد که من بتونم او را کشف کنم. اینجا ما میخوایم او را کشف کنم، اما ما جای ندارم که او را کشف کنم. تخمش دارم جایش ندارم. And she has the seeds of it, and uh, she would let you know when she um, actually cultivates it. But it's much softer, and uh, the smell and taste is different. The size is also very different. Like the typical leeks that we have here, the the, uh, the bulb and the, the leaves are very wide and, and thick. Um, the gandana, the closest thing I said was that we have here is, is Chinese chives, which are very uh, thin, kind of like um, even thinner than uh, scallions. Um, and, they, and they grow very, very long um, in a big, and you can get it in a big bunch. And the yeah. taste is different. Um, yogurt, uh, Middle Eastern yogurt is always a little bit more tart. Is there a different method to make it? So Sharifa, you mentioned you make your own yogurt. Um, how, how, what's, how do you do that? Mige ki chetori mas dorus mikoni? Mas ya chaka? Mas. Shira josh metam, shir ke yach kat, shir garmak shod. Bazi yak kashak mas ta da bainish mindazam, 
بازو را در کمپلک پت میکنم که گرم باشه تا یک روز او خوب ماست غلیز میشه So I boil the milk and um, then uh, let it uh, sit for a while so it gets warm for the finger. And then I put one or two spoonfuls of uh, good yogurt in it and um, cover the um, pot for one day. After one day, I get a good yogurt. That's how I do it. You might need to do a yogurt class. Um, someone commented, I have catered from Sharifa. Her chapli kebabs, naan, and okra curry are delicious. Miga, as Sharifa, ye kazoi gereftam, hamu chokra kebab, ke khayli khosh mazda bude. Thank you, Allah. Shukr zinda wa shinta shakr. We have some comments about uh, bringing Sanctuary Kitchen to Boston. We would love that. Um, before COVID, our, our goal was to start branching out into other cities that have large immigrant and refugee populations. Unfortunately, things are on hold right now, um, but that is the long-term goal for Sanctuary Kitchen to be a replicable model um, across the country um, to really benefit the communities and build these connections. Um, um, let's see what else. Um, a lot of people are really intrigued about your kadu, Sharifa. <laughs> um, we might have to do a class um, on our demo on uh, how to make kadu birani. Um, so I'm not going to ask her to share the recipe right now. So we can save that for later. میگه خیلی از کدو بورانی خوششون اومده و حالا یه بار دیگه شاید قرار بذاریم که اونو درست بکنی. الان نمیخوایم ولی بعدا. درست است باش بگوین درست است آماده میکنیم از پمکین استفاده میکنیم و زیاد خوش میاییم yeah, uh, I, I use pumpkin and it comes out really good and of course I will do it whenever you are ready for it yeah there's quite a few dishes actually that use pumpkin um, or squash in Afghan cuisine there's like a bolani which is a stuffed bread that has um, you can make it with the pumpkin or with potato. That's really popular here. We do a class um, on Bolani. Um, we also, somebody asked about a dumpling class. We do do a dumpling class. Um, we've done it in person. We haven't done it virtually yet because it does take time. Um, but if you guys are willing to put in like two hours, it's, it's a great class and it was a great recipe. Um, we'll definitely uh, make, work on that. Uh, we have people joining from Missouri, uh, from Arizona. Thank you. That's really exciting. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. Uh, somebody suggested to try Chinese cauliflower. I've never tried it myself. Um, a lot of people are saying thank you. The presentation was wonderful. Um, we just have one last question in the Q&A. Uh, which is um, from where else? What other countries um, do your chefs come from at Sanctuary Kitchen? Um, so the, the majority of the chefs that we work with come from um, Afghanistan, from Syria, from Sudan, Iraq. Um, I think, yeah, from there. And then we have a few um, from, uh, we have one from the Dominican Republic. We've had, uh, we have a chef from Mauritius. Um, we've had a chef from Iran, um, actually Marguerite and her husband, um, uh, have a, uh, Iran, uh, Persian, um, catering company here, and they've actually done, um, a class with us as well. Um, we have a chef from, uh, Ecuador and Mexico. So, uh, quite a few, um, 11 different countries. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. And, and then, so we feature uh, in our catering um, and in our classes and events, um, all of these chefs. Thank you so much. I think that was, I think that's all the questions, right? Am I missing any? Well, this is uh, when we extend our heartfelt appreciation uh, to each of you. Uh, there was a wonderful feeling this morning. Uh, we're all in our own separate places, 
what we all felt is that we were in the kitchen together. And, and you know, when that can happen, it's quite remarkable. Uh, Catherine, uh, Kat, uh, Andrea has said it, thank you to you, but thank you so much for introducing us to Sanctuary City, uh, Sanctuary Kitchen. Uh, you are de indeed doing extraordinary work. We share your belief that bringing people together and celebrating what unites us is just so critically important. Stay by our side. Uh, we love what you do. We do hope you, we can welcome you to Boston and we welcome, we look forward to when we're all out and about all coming together so we can see one another at the park on the Greenway. Thank you very much. Love those children. They'll grow up sooner and quicker than you think. It just was wonderful to see hear their sounds this morning. Have a lovely day, everybody. And thank you very, very, very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for to all of you in Boston, as well as all the attendees, and to Sharifa and Marguerite for um, sharing your your cuisine. Absolutely. En enjoy the day, everybody. It's a wonderful way to begin. Thank you. Old ways, age friendly. We love you. We love you all. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Thank you.